Good to see you again, Connor. Yeah. Thank you for agreeing to do this interview. It's wonderful. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. So for uh, those that don't know you, uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, yourself, what you do, who you are? Um, so, my name you? is Connor. Um, I'm a audio engineer here at Atlantic Studios West and freelance mastering engineer. Sweet. So um, how long have you been working here at Atlantic? Um, I've been here with Atlantic for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And you're enjoying yourself? Love it. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best bit about working here then? Um, watching creativity happen. I think like being in tracking sessions here, it's just like seeing like songwriters and producers and artists just like just create, mm -hmm. you know, as a mastering engineer, I'm always on the final stage of it. So I don't, I wasn't seeing it be created often and just watching artists and everyone just like create from scratch nothing into something you know mm -hmm. so what do you think first interested you in the professional industry and how did you get into what you do now so you obviously you track here you have your own mastering suite and right. so what was the process from obviously young you through to getting to this point here um there was a video game called rock band and I took the USB mic from that and plugged it into my mom's computer and it worked. And I was like, I want to do nothing else with my life. <laughs> so <laughs> this is it. Yeah. I mean, I, I like, I had like a little keyboard growing up and like a short scale guitar and, you know, I wanted to be a rock star. And then um, I figured out you could record with the USB mic from a video game. And I was like, this is it. This is, this is the thing. And then just like, trialing out different things and the engineering path went to school for it and found myself wanting to be a mastering engineer i like taking songs over the finish line and it's a pretty important process isn't yeah. it i think um, most songs now are pretty much mastered all the time right so right it's unusual to not have a track mastered so, right so your role is pretty important yeah, especially like being in the environment that I'm in and, you know, like making sure there's no like pops or clicks or any other artifacts in it. You know, it's a very important part, mm -hmm. especially in like high fidelity music. You know, there's there can't be like artifacts or anything like that unless it's a creative type way. Mm, absolutely. So unless it's meant to be in the tracking. Right? right. So, I mean, that brings me on to the next question, which was as a mastering engineer, how important is high fidelity audio? To you. super important um high fidelity gear and specifically like the dave or the mojo or anything else um being able to have that fine detail allows me to hear that 10 percent extra that i wouldn't hear on like other systems you know it's super important whether it's a reverb tail or you know like a bad fade or something like that like all of those things matter mm -hmm. into making like the best sounding tracks possible cool. yeah, yeah so that it really matters to you then well that's good to hear at least you're enjoying the equipment as well by the sound love it, it. So. <laughs> love it. <laughs> that's cool so um as a mastering engineer this is a, a question directed more at your mastering side than, than the tracking side um do you work on old recordings and remaster them um, or is it all new recordings? It's mostly new recordings. Um, yeah, just mostly newer stuff. I mean, there's a, you know, like a restoration that needs to be done every once in a while, but um, who, newer who does stuff. Where that come from, that restoration? Is that from individuals? Is it from Atlantic themselves? Is uh, it? Just individuals, really. Okay. Um, you know, like someone might have like a cassette tape of a family member Okay. Um, you know, singing songs with the family or, you know, like an old performance that needs to be redone or damaged cassette or, yeah, just yeah. stuff like that that needs to be restored. And that's another reason why high fidelity gear comes into play because it's, you know, that extra 10%, like I was talking about, there's a lot of stuff you hear that you wouldn't necessarily hear on other systems. Sure, absolutely. So, um, thinking about talking about remastering then um do you go back to some of your own works and remaster them and do you do that for clients or do that do you do that more for yourself if you do it at all um a mix of both i mean if the client will go through the efforts to like re-upload or if it's that important of a project then absolutely but mostly for myself that's how i 
in a way grow because or try new things too because it's like this is how i used to do it but this is my new way and i can find you know like oh this sounds way better than the original mm -hmm. that i did so that's, that's nice. so it's a it's sort of like a teaching yourself yeah process as well at the same time so. and it's like also watching myself grow in a way do you enjoy that or do you do you do it through necessity uh <laughs> mix of both okay. again um i enjoy like getting better at my craft and like learning new ways to do things that would take me three steps versus doing something that takes me one step now mm -hmm. um but i like doing that okay that's good so um talking about gear um and stuff like that are you uh in the box mastering engineer or do you have a selection of outboard that you use specifically um i'm all in the box okay um i fight myself every day on debating whether i want to go outside the box or not but i think with today's demand of like return turnaround times mm -hmm. uh in the box is more efficient um just because of recall and everything like that it's just a lot quicker and i don't have to deal with like you know like left and right output calibrations being off and stuff like that it's just very like get to the music yeah and sure. i think that's the most important part mm -hmm. you're just cutting out all the negative factors and you're just getting sure. into the music and yeah, yeah. i think Absolutely. that's what's important no, that's fair. So, do you have um, a favorite bit of software that you use for your mastering? Is it like Isotope or is it um, not Isotope because everyone uses Isotope, right? Wave so, Lab. Okay. That is Wave my DAW, mastering DAW of choice. Mm -hmm. And then um, Acoustica plugins. Mm -hmm. Those have been great. They matter to you. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Can't live without them. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, so, uh, just sort of one or two last questions um it's very quickly how did you hear about us called electronics um and the gear that you do use how do you integrate it into your workflow so i am very big into like the whole hi-fi world mm -hmm. and um I've, I've seen the name a couple times and then our studio manager cd like introduced me and i got to like demo a couple pieces of gear and i was like this is different i haven't heard conversion like the dave it's whole other tier that's very kind of you to say <laughs> and uh i use personally i use the mojo too um in my studio because i don't have traditional io mm -hmm. and so i needed a solid headphone deck that i could you know take with me when i needed it and also use it in studio and the Mojo 2 is great because I have like top tier conversion on the go anywhere. I don't need to worry about like being out of town and being like, oh, well, I'll get those songs back to you like in a week when I get back. It's like people will send me stuff. I have my Mojo. I know that I can get work done wherever. Well, that's great. That's great to hear. At least, you know, we're helping you out as best as we can. So. Oh, it's been great. <laughs> that's cool. It's good. Okay, well, lovely. Well, thanks very much, Connor. Um, yeah, thank you. That was it. That's, you know, not too much pressure, I hope. So. <laughs> cool. Lovely. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers.